Hey everybody, Jim here with your daily dose of Japanese gaming goodness. It is the import game of the day, and today's game is Melty Blood Actress Again for the PlayStation 2. This is one of my absolute favorite fighting games for the PS2, and unfortunately it's one that very few gamers are familiar with, even in Japan, as it's based on a series of self-published PC games and it's technically part of the Tsukihime series, which aren't fighting games at all, but actually visual novels. What makes this game so enjoyable for me is just the sheer speed and depth of the gameplay. This is a very fast-paced fighting game that has a heavy emphasis on stringing together long combos, very similar to Fighters by Arc System Works, but Melty Blood has a certain smoothness to its gameplay, that I haven't really found in any other fighters. Plus, the roster is massive at 27 playable characters, and each one manages to feel unique, as they all have varying levels of speed and power, and wildly different special attacks, and the controls are as such that pulling off combos and counters and blending special attacks and super combos into regular combos is a breeze. This game is the definition of easy to pick up and play, but very difficult to master, and every character has three different gameplay styles to choose from based on different phases of the moon, and this can change their strategy completely, along with their normal, special, and super attacks. Simply put, the gameplay is amazing, and so are the graphics and sound design. If you're a fan of the character designs in the Fate series, then you'll love these as well, as they're both drawn by the same artist, and the game overall has a great, colorful anime look to it and the soundtrack is a nice mix of hard rocking high energy tracks in some stages and more subdued music for others but without a doubt the graphics sound and especially gameplay are all top notch 2d fighting fans definitely owe it to themselves to give melty blood a try Hey everybody, Jim here with your daily dose of Japanese gaming goodness. It is the import game of the day, and today's game is Sengoku Basada Cross for the PlayStation 2. This is one of the most criminally overlooked 2D fighters on the PS2, and it's also one of the more affordable fighters on the system these days, so 2D fighting fans should keep an eye out for it, especially if you're a fan of games like Guilty Gear and Blaze Blue because this is yet another in a long line of 2D fighters developed by Arc System Works who, if you ask me, have never made a bad fighting game, not even close. Sengoku Basara Cross is based on a series of Dynasty Warrior style action games set in Japan and featuring stylized reimaginings of historic Japanese figures, so it's almost like if Arc developed a Samurai Spirits game. It features very fast-paced fighting action with a heavy emphasis on stringing together long combos, and it's coupled with over-the-top super attacks and instant kill moves. You've got a wide variety of characters to choose from, and they all come with assist characters that can be used in battle to either be incorporated into combos, or they can save you in a pinch. Also, as I said, you get the classic arc fighting mechanic of the instant kill move that can end around immediately, but they're tricky to pull off and can leave you vulnerable if you miss. Overall, this is a very fun game, whether you're playing single player or one-on-one -on -one versus. It's fast and frantic, and it's easy to pick up and play, but difficult to master. Plus, it's Arc System Works in cooperation with Capcom, so you know the graphics are gonna be beautiful and the soundtrack is gonna kick ass. The character designs are great, the visuals are very colorful and flashy, and there's a wide variety of cool looking stages and the soundtrack is a great mix of hard rock and classic Japanese instruments. All around this is an amazing game. If you're in the market for a new 2D fighter on your PS2, give Sengoku Basara Cross a try. You'll be glad you did. Hey everybody, Jim here with your daily dose of Japanese gaming goodness. It is the import game of the day, and today's game is Cowboy Bebop Serenade of Remembrance for the PlayStation 2. This is a 2005 release that was developed by Banpresto, 
and published by Bandai, and it's obviously based on the anime series of the same name, which happens to be one of my all-time favorites, and this game features an original story that features the crew of the Bebop going after the treasure of a long-dead space pirate while also competing with some rival bounty hunters and contending with a shadow organization that's trying to thwart their every move. The bulk of the gameplay in Cowboy Bebop is that of a beat-em-up, which for me comes with mixed results. It's not a straight-up button masher, as if you want to perform combos, you have to time your attacks just right in order to link them together. So if you prefer to just smash one button to beat everyone into oblivion, this isn't the beat-em-up for you. Also, you have the ability to parry attacks at the cost of some of your stamina, and if you hit the parry button at the exact right moment, you can take out enemies in a single hit. You'll be playing as Spike, Jet, and Faye, and they all play differently, but the general strategy always remains the same. There are also third-person shooting stages thrown in for good measure, and stages that have you playing something of a rail shooter where you're trying to beat the clock to the end of the stage. It's not perfect, in fact, you could say that on the whole, the gameplay here is kind of mediocre, but when you factor in the story, graphics, voice work, and an awesome soundtrack composed by Yoko Kano, who also composed all of the music for the anime, this is a licensed game that, if nothing else, does justice to the source material in terms of the presentation, at least. It's Cowboy Bebop Serenade of Remembrance, and it's worth looking into if you're a fan of the series. Hey everybody, Jim here with your daily dose of Japanese gaming goodness. It is the import game of the day, and today's game is Hokuto no Ken for the PlayStation 2. This is a game that was released originally in arcades in 2005 and on the PS2 in 2007. It's published by Sega, and it was developed by Arc. System works, so it has a lot in common with their many, many other fighting games like Guilty Gear, Blaze Blue, and more recently, Dragon Ball Fighters. Being based on the Fist of the North Star manga and anime, it features 10 characters from the series, including all of the primary heroes and villains. And while 10 characters doesn't really sound like much of a roster, the game makes up for it by giving each character a distinct playstyle and a unique set of special attacks and super combos. The basic gameplay is very much like any other art game. It's very fast-paced and features a heavy emphasis on stringing together long combos and air juggles, but adds a few things to give it a distinct Fist of the North Star feel. For example, this game features a 7-star meter located underneath your health bar, and by landing certain attacks, you can whittle these stars away, and once all seven are gone, your opponent is open to receive your fatal KO move, an attack that instantly ends the round, regardless of how much health they have left, and these attacks are very cool and recreate attacks from the anime, which I especially like. So what you end up with is a fast-playing game that is extremely fun, easy to pick up and play, and offers a variety of playstyles. In short, if you're a fan of Arc System Works and Fist of the North Star, then this game was tailor-made for you, and with its beautiful 2D graphics and high-energy heavy metal soundtrack, this is one game that I can recommend without hesitation. It's Hokuto no Ken, and it's undeniably awesome. Hey everybody, Jim here with your daily dose of Japanese gaming goodness. It is the import game of the day, and today's game is Yu Yu Hakusho Forever for the PlayStation 2. This is a 2005 release developed by Dimps and published by Banpresto, and it's based on one of my personal favorite series of manga and anime, and that is, of course, Yu Yu Hakusho from legendary manga artist Yoshihiro Togashi, the same man who created other greats such as Level E and Hunter x Hunter, and this game features characters 
from the Dark Tournament and Makai's story arcs from the manga. This is a one-on-one -on -one fighter with an exceedingly simple control scheme. You're given weak and heavy attacks that can be mixed into combos, a special attack button that can be combined with the directional buttons for different attacks, as well as block and sidestep buttons. The real meat of the game is building up to your character's ultimate super attack which initiates a cutscene and the effectiveness of the attack hinges on each character executing a series of button presses. Conversely, instead of performing a super attack, some characters have the option of transforming into a more powerful version of themselves. Also, in the course of a match, characters can clash in bouts of button mashing and quick time button presses which punch up an otherwise very simple and arguably kind of mediocre fighting game and instead of each match ending with an immediate KO, you can potentially beat the 10 count and continue the match if you can button mash fast enough. All of these different aspects together make this game a fun and unique fighting game, and the presentation makes it a great anime licensed game. The cel shaded graphics look really good, and the cutscenes for super attacks and transformations have a very cool dynamic shading look to them, which I really like. Also, the soundtrack features a lot of music from the anime, including Smile Bomb, one of my personal favorite anime tunes. All of that adds up to what I think is the best game based on this series. It's Yu Yu Hakusho forever, and it's pretty damn cool. Hey everybody, Jim here with your daily dose of Japanese gaming goodness. It is the import game of the day, and today's game is... Bo 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 Hajike Matsuri for the PlayStation 2. This is a 2002 release that was developed and published by Hudson Soft, and it's based on the series of anime and manga of the same name, and it's not one that I'm terribly familiar with, but I'll do my best to explain the basic plot. It's the year 3000X, and an evil, bald warlord is sending his troops across the land, shaving the heads of everyone they come across. So it falls on the shoulders of bo 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 bo, -bo and his cohorts, to defend the people, Bobo in particular using his fist of the nose hair to devastating effect. This game, in a nutshell, is a rhythm-based game of sorts that uses the analog sticks almost exclusively. Most stages have Bobo walking toward the screen as enemies and obstacles come at him, at which time you'll need to flick the analog sticks in the right direction to unleash the power of your nose hairs of fury. You're joined by more characters as you progress through each stage, and you can also launch what can only be described as a heat-seeking nose hair attack that wreaks havoc on the entire screen. There are also boss battles in the form of QTE stages where you enter multiple directional moves on the analog sticks before your opponent, and these can actually be pretty damn tricky. Overall, the gameplay here isn't anything amazing, but it is fun, and the real selling point is the wacky story and characters and the super colorful graphics that really do the anime justice. Plus, the game features an ultra-funky soundtrack that fits perfectly with the visuals, the gameplay, and just the overall wackiness of this game. Like I said, I've never seen this anime before, but I must say, I'm intrigued. It's Bo 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 Hajike Matsuri, and it's made me reconsider this whole nose hair trimming thing. Check it out. Hey everybody, Jim here with your daily dose of Japanese gaming goodness. It is the import game of the day, and today's game is... Garoden Break Blow Fist or Twist for the PlayStation 2. This is a 2007 release that was developed and published by ESP, and it's based on a series of manga that was in turn based on a series of novels by author Baku Yumemakura. The manga was illustrated by Keisuke Itagaki, who is best known for his signature series 
grappler, Baki, and it certainly shows in this game as his art style is very recognizable. The story follows a young martial arts expert named Bunshichi Tanba that enjoys facing down and beating famous fighters from television in the streets, but when he enters the secret, underground world of no-holds-barred fighting, he has his hands full with the actual best fighters in the world. This is, in a nutshell, a mixed martial arts fighting game that brings together various characters from radically different fighting backgrounds like karate, kung fu, and submission wrestling. It's not terribly realistic, but the varying playstyles and strategies involved definitely keep the gameplay interesting. Something that I especially like about this game is that it incorporates a body targeting system similar to some pro wrestling games where you can target specific parts of your opponent's body to wear it down. Doing this will eventually cripple that body part, and when you attack it again, you can stagger your opponent and deal some extra damage. This is a game that allows for some extreme button mashing, but it's far smarter to pick your shots and take your opponent apart. It's certainly not a conventional fighting game, but once you get accustomed to the play mechanics, it becomes very fun and very competitive. Plus, it is a decent looking game. If nothing else, the character designs are spot on in representing the manga and the sound design is pretty good too with a hard rocking soundtrack and some bone crunching sound effects. But I say, if you're looking for a more unique fighting game experience, definitely check out God Odin Break Blow Fist or Twist. It's pretty damn cool. Hey everybody, Jim here with your daily dose of Japanese gaming goodness. It is the import game of the day, and today's game is... The Super Dimensional Fortress Macross for the PlayStation 2. This is a 2003 release that was published by Bandai and developed by Sega AM2, the same Sega AM2 responsible for games like Afterburner, Virtua Fighter and Shinmu, just to name a few, so you can just imagine what they could do when given a license like Macross. So this game is obviously based on the anime of the same name, but in a cool little twist, it actually features two different story modes, a longer but slightly less difficult mode based on the TV series and a shorter, more difficult mode based on Macross the movie, and both are complete with all of the characters, battles, and mechs from the source material making it especially cool for fans of the anime. The gameplay in Macross is basically split into two different sections, air combat and ground combat. In the air, it's very similar to a lot of other 3D arcade style jet fighter games. Lots of enemies flying all around you that you have to destroy in order to progress and you have access to various weapons like machine guns and lock-on missiles. This being Macross though, you can transform into three different modes that alter your movement and weapon systems. When on the ground though, the action shifts into more of a 3D run and gun gameplay style, which is also fun, but the real meat of the game is definitely in the air combat. It's nothing too complex, but it is enjoyable and when coupled with the nice visuals, and really busy backgrounds in some of the stages. There are some epic battles going on. This can be a very exciting and fun game to play through. On top of that, the soundtrack is really good too. It features some very recognizable tracks from the anime, which is great. And the original tracks are pretty good too. So while I don't think this is necessarily the best air combat game on the PS2, it's definitely worth playing, especially if you're a Macross fan. Check it out. Hey everybody, Jim here with your daily dose of Japanese gaming goodness. It is the import game of the day, and today's game is... The Rumblefish for the PlayStation 2. This is a 2005 release that was developed by Dimps and published by Sammy in the arcade and Sega on the PS2, and it also has a sequel 
that was released exclusively in arcades. It's set in the 21st century after an apocalyptic event has taken place and the world has recovered thanks to a huge mega corporation that is now hosting a martial arts tournament for no other reason than to watch people from the slums fight for sport. So there's no connection to the 1983 film of the same name, so do not expect to see Matt Dillon and Mickey Rourke duking it out in this one. If you play a lot of modern 2D fighters, especially those developed by Arc System Works, the Rumblefish should feel pretty familiar to you. It features a combo system that lets you string together light, medium, and heavy attacks that can be linked with special moves and super combos. It's pretty standard stuff, but it does play very smoothly, and it's a lot of fun. A unique aspect of this game is that it features two different super combo gauges, an offensive one that fills up as you land attacks and allows you to perform an unblockable super attack when it's full, and a defensive gauge that fills up as you take damage and block incoming attacks, and it allows you to perform basically a combo breaker and counter attack. And when both gauges are full though, you can perform your character's ultimate attack, which deals a ton of damage and drains both gauges. The solid gameplay combined with a unique super gauge setup makes for a 2D fighter that feels familiar, but not entirely derivative, and I like it a lot. And on top of that, I do like the character designs and the visuals in general, and in particular, I like how each character has lots of different animations and fluid movements, and the soundtrack is pretty good too. So if you're looking for a solid 2D fighter for your PS2 that you may have overlooked, definitely give the Rumblefish a try. Again, there's no Mickey Rourke, but it's still pretty damn good. Hey everybody, Jim here with your daily dose of Japanese gaming goodness. It is the import game of the day, and today's game is... Fate Unlimited Codes for the PlayStation 2. This is a 2008 release that is a port of the arcade original, which itself is based on the Fate series of visual novels by Type Moon, who were actually not the developers of this game, instead handing it over to Aiding to do the honors, and Capcom handled the publishing. There's also an updated version available for the PSP, which was eventually made available internationally via a digital download from the PlayStation Store. I admittedly don't know much about the Fate series, aside from the fact that it features a whole bunch of different specialized warriors fighting to the death in a tournament called the Fifth Holy Grail War, so that's enough for me, really. I have no intentions of playing the visual novels, but if there are more fighting games like this one out there, then you can count me in. This game gives you 17 playable characters to choose from, and they all have unique weapons, special attacks, super combos, and some of them even have access to a limited number of items that can be used during gameplay. Combos are very fluid and easy to pull off while incorporating special attacks, and super combos, which draw energy from a three-tiered super combo meter at the bottom of the screen. But another cool addition to the gameplay is the Holy Grail meter at the top of the screen that fills up as the match goes on, allowing both fighters to draw from it for enhanced attacks. It's a very fun and fast-paced fighting game with a great variety of characters and a ton of gameplay modes and bonus content to keep you playing. Plus, this is a pretty good-looking game with some very nice stages to fight in, and great character designs, and a very good soundtrack, so definitely consider adding Fate Unlimited Codes to your PS2 collection if you're a fighting game fan. It's awesome. 